Our goal is to change the condition to a different product name, get the sum ifs total. But if we select all, we want to add the whole column. And when we add new data with new products to our Excel table, we want our drop down to still have all at the top, but we want it to include all the new products. Now we're going to see some amazing old school sum ifs tricks, and we'll see some new school Microsoft 365 tricks. Now the first thing we have to do is get a unique list from this column. And the cheap and easy way is just to copy everything in the column, Control C, and then off to the side, Control V. I want to paste as values only. So I'm going to open the Smart Tag with Control, and Paste Values is V. Now to get a unique list, I'm going to go to Data, Data Tools, Remove Duplicates. I do not want to expand the selection, so I'm going to continue with the current selection, Remove Duplicates. Click OK. OK. And at the bottom, I'll just type All. Now I want to add Data Validation drop-down list, so Data, and there's the button. But let's use the keyboard, Alt-D-L, Tab to get to Allow, L to get to List, Tab to get to Source, and we'll highlight, click OK. So now we have our drop down with all at the bottom. Now we can use the sum ifs function to add with one condition, sum range. We'll select the whole sales column, comma, criteria range, select the product column, comma, criteria. We'll use Aspen, that cell reference F4, close parentheses, and Enter. So that'll work for any of the products. But once we select all, there's no all here, so sum ifs correctly delivers 0. But let's F2, put it in edit mode. After the equal sign, we'll use the if function and say, hey, if that cell right there equals, in double quotes, that all text, comma, the value if true, well, I want to add everything. So I'm going to use a second function, adding all the sales, comma. And then value if false, we'll just run sum ifs close parentheses, and Enter. So now we have it working. Aspen, it gets the right total. All, it gets the right total. Now there's some other ways we can do this. If you had an empty cell here, well, sum is going to add everything here no matter what's in the product column. But maybe you didn't want that. And you might have a formula that delivers a zero length text string. Now we can exclude both of those if we want. So we do some ifs, but in criteria 1, that's where we'll put the if function. So I'll say if f4 equals all, then because this is in criteria 1, in value of true, I need a condition that'll pick out all text that's one or more character. And that means in double quotes, we have to use wildcards. Question mark means exactly one character. Asterisk means zero or more characters. So we put that in double quotes, and it will only add when there's one or more characters. That's the value if true, comma, the value if false will be F4. And that's our formula. Now, if for some reason you really did want this zero length text string, then we don't want to say one or more. We want to get rid of the question mark and just use the wildcard for zero or more characters. And now that one will work. That formula is adding everything except for the actual empty cell. And there's still one other situation. What if you had not text but a number and you wanted to count it? Then you use the condition not empty, double quote, less than, greater than, and double quote. Now, here comes the fun part of the video. Because if you have Microsoft 365 Excel, instead of manually creating this data validation list with the word all, we can use a formula to create the unique list that'll see any new data that's added. And it will always have all at the top. Now, we're going to do this in a few steps, and then we'll mash it all together right here. 
So the first step is to get a sorted unique list. So we'll use the amazing Dynamics Build Array function sort, and then unique inside of that, pointing to the product column, close, close. And when I hit Enter, we get a spilled unique list. But notice up in the formula bar, all the cells below the top cell are grayed out. The formula only lives in the top cell. Now, there's four items here, and we really need five items. That means we're going to have to trick our formula and convert this from one column by four rows to one column by five rows. And we can start that trickery with the sequence function. We need to know how many rows are from that spilled array. And if I highlight it, the pound or hashtag spilled operator says get everything that spills from L9. Close parentheses. Now I need five rows, so I'm going to add one, comma. We don't need columns, comma. And we're going to start at 0, close parentheses. When I hit Enter, this gives me 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now the significance of that 0 is because we are going to use index. And index is notorious, comma. If in the row number argument you give it a 0, that means it'll get all the rows. So this will, in essence, look up and deliver all four rows. Now if we put this sequence of number into that row number argument, the 0 gets four items. But the 1, 2, 3, 4, that'll get 1, 2, 3, 4. And because we're going to tell index to get the 1 after it already pulled the 0, it'll replace the items here. To see this in action, we'll use index. And the array will be the spilled dynamic sorted list. And there's row number, close parentheses. And when I hit Enter, that's our trickery. We have a duplicate value at the top. But now we have five rows of data. And from that, we can say if sequence gets a 0, then please give me all. And all will appear right there. Otherwise deliver what index has, and it will deliver all the rest. So after the equal sign, I'll say if. I actually need Control c that, Control v If anything in that sequence is equal to 0, comma, then please give me all, comma. Otherwise, the value if false, index. Now remember, index is delivering that duplicate at the top. But because we use this 0, all will already be there. And so that's how we append all, close parentheses, to the top of our dynamic list. If I type a S here, bam, just like that, it's working. Control Z. Now we have lots of duplication here. We use sequence twice, and we use this unique list three times. So anytime you have duplicate formula elements, that's the perfect time for the let function. Now I want to copy this using Control C, C. That'll copy it and open the clipboard, Enter. And then here, Control C. So I have these two things stored up in my clipboard, equals let. And let is amazing because it'll allow us to define variables and then use those variables. The first argument is name one. This is where we get to name the variable. Sorted unique list, comma. And the formula element for SUL, I'll come over to the clipboard and click, comma. Calculation or our second name. And for us, we'll call this variable rows, comma. And the value will be the sequence. Except for right there, we get to use our variable, sul. All right, so, so far we have two variables, sul and rows, comma. And now we make a calculation. If rows, and watch this, when I type rows, there's the icon for the variable just in this one let formula tab. Are you equal to 0, comma? If you are, then all. Otherwise, index looking up from sul tab with the rows variable close parentheses close parentheses and close now let's make this easier to read after the first variable alt enter after the second variable alt enter and that is beautiful 
XX. Bam. Control Z. Now we can come over here, Alt D L, Tab L, Tab. And our source will be J9. Then we type the spilled range operator. Click OK. And now when we change the product, it's working. When we come down and copy new data, paste it to the bottom of the Excel table. Uh-oh. This one up here did not update, but bam. There's the new product, Bellin, and all is at the top. All right, so we learned about how to use all as a condition in some ifs. We saw a formula that will add everything no matter what, one that uses the text criteria, one character or more, zero characters or more, and the condition for not empty. And then we saw this beautiful let formula. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up. Leave a comment and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. All right, we'll see you next video.